Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Introduction to Psychology Part 1 PSY 312 by Tear Knowledge. So today in this video we will be discussing the nervous system. In our previous video we discussed the nervous system in which we discussed the central nervous system, what actually uh, nervous system is and what is central nervous system. Then we discussed the uh, cerebral cortex um, which comes under the topic of cerebrum. Cerebral cortex was a very 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 large topic so I decided to uh, cover it uh, before uh, starting the initial video on forebrain. So the cerebral cortex and the four uh, different types of lobes uh, uh, lobes uh, we have discussed that in the uh, previous video and I have given the link in the description you can watch it in that video we discussed uh, the cerebral cortex corpus uh, callosum and the four lobes which are the temporal lobe uh, parietal lobe frontal lobe and um, occipital lobe and its functions so these all topics comes under the uh, heading of uh, full brain and under the subheading of cerebrum so uh, in a previous video we discussed the cerebrum in full brain and in this video we'll be discussing the cerebral hemisphere in, under the topic of cerebrum so keep in mind that cerebrum is a large topic so in this video we'll be discussing cerebrum cerebrum hemisphere uh, which are the two hemispheres and language and the left hemisphere because in this video our main concern will be the left hemisphere and then we will be comparing the left hemisphere with the right hemisphere and in the end we will be discussing aphasia uh, and we will also learn how to pronounce it so uh, this is the flow chart which I have made and we are continuously discussing it and we will be discussing until the last chapter of the nervous system. So uh, let's uh, discuss it again. I'm going to zoom it. Uh, we will just go through a quick revision. Uh, first thing is the nervous system and the nervous system is divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. So we are discussing the central nervous system. In our previous videos, we have discussed the definition of the central nervous system, the brain, and uh, we will discuss the spinal cord after we complete the brain. So here the central nervous system is divided into brain and spinal cord. Okay, now let's come to the brain. The brain has uh, three major division. The first one is forebrain, then there is a midbrain, and then there is a hindbrain. So uh, midbrain, uh, have, uh, in midbrain we will discuss the reticular formation and in hindbrain we will also discuss the reticular formation. But here in forebrain we are discussing cerebrum, limbic system, thalamus and hypothalamus. Whereas in midbrain we will discuss reticular formation and in hindbrain we will be discussing cerebellum, pons and medulla. And after that, we will be discussing the peripheral nervous system, which includes the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system have further two divisions, which are afferent nerves and efferent nerves. Now let's come to the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system have uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. So in this video, we will be discussing the uh, major divisions the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system then brain and spinal cord and autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system so um, we have already discussed that in great detail in our previous video and i have given the link in the description if you haven't watched that go and watch that video so uh, we can continue our lectures and it will be way more easy if you watch that video and then you come to this uh, chapter because in this video our main concern will be the uh, cerebral hemisphere in aphasia under the topic of cerebrum. So we are carrying the brain and the central nervous system. Uh, in our previous video we have uh, discussed the central nervous system and in this video we'll be just going a quick revision. The, we have discussed that 
Nervous system include the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system and specialized for communication. Up to 1 trillion neurons are linked throughout your body in a complex organized communication network called the nervous system. And the human nervous system is divided into two main divisions, which is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So in order for even a simple behavior to occur, as we discussed, such as curling um, the toes or scratching the nose, these two divisions must function as single integrated unit and yet each of these division is highly specialized and perform different tasks so let's come to the central nervous system in the central nervous system we will be discussing the brain and spinal cord and in brain we will be discussing forebrain midbrain and hindbrain so uh, if we talk about the central nervous system basically the central nervous system um, Undoubtedly, it is the central nervous system that differentiates humans from the other lower species. And humans, by virtue of their brain and spinal cord, are the uh, capa capable of thinking, remembering, and reasoning. So the numerous and important functions performed by the central nervous system are the reason these structures are enclosed in bones uh, in the brain, within the skull, and the spinal cord is um, in the vertebral column. And for additional support, uh, a protection both for the ad additional protection both these structures are also suspended in the cerebral uh, cerebrospinal fluid and then uh, the brain is the uh, you can say evolutionary it, it, it is this structure that connects and distinguishes us from the rest of the living beings so uh, let's come to the forebrain which is a type of the brain the definition includes the largest and the most complex brain region which contains centers for complex and behavior and complex behavior and mental processes so um, actually there are Mm, some main points which ha which is needed to be noted is it is the largest and most complex uh, complex brain region and it contains center for behavior and mental processes. So, uh, forebrain is the largest and most complex region of the brain, encompassing a variety of structures, including the thalamus, hypothalamus, limbic system, and cerebrum. So, this list is not exhaustive, and some of these structures have their own subdivisions. Um, the thalamus and hypothalamus and limbic system form the core of the brain, and all these structures are located near the top of the brainstem, and above them is the cerebrum the seat of complex thoughts um, that this is a relatively uh, large structure and may contain 70 percent of the neurons in the central nervous system and the wrinkled surface of the cerebrum is the cerebral cortex here you can see the wrinkled surface the um, outer layer of the brain the part that looks like a cauliflower so the forebrain is further divided into cerebrum, limbic system, thalamus, and hypothalamus. And cerebrum is a vast topic because it almost come out, cover the uh, most of the brain area, and it contains the cerebral cortex. And under the topic cerebrum, we have discussed the cerebral cortex and the four lobes uh, in our previous video. If you want to watch that, there's a link given in the description description you can watch it so in the cerebrum we have this case um, the cerebral cortex the lobes and, and uh, after that we will be discussing the cerebral hemisphere in this video and after that we will be discussing uh, limbic system and thalamus and hypothalamus so i will just give you a quick revision of uh, what we have discussed in our previous video about the cerebrum and the cerebral cortex and the four different types of lobes so um the cerebellum is the largest and most complex part of the human brain and includes the brain area that um, the areas that uh, are responsible for or most complex mental activities including learning remembering thinking 
um, and consciousness itself. So the cerebral cortex is the convoluted outer layer of the cerebrum. The cortex is folded and bent so that its large surface area about 1.5 square feet can be packed into the limited volume of the skull. So the cerebrum is divided into two halves called the cerebral hemisphere or you can say hemispheres so the hemisphere or the cerebral hemisphere are the right and left halves of the cerebrum the hemisphere are separated in the center of the brain by a longitudinal fissure uh, fissure that runs from the front to the back and this fissure descends to a thick uh, a thick band of fibers called the corpus callosum and the corpus callosum is the structure that connects the two cerebral hemisphere mm. and each cerebral hemisphere is divided into four parts called lobes and most of our convenience than um, uh, then because uh, there are uh, four distinct pieces to some extent each of these lobe is dedicated to specific purposes and um, you can see the location of the lobes can be seen in the picture this is the frontal lobe this is the parietal lobe and this is the occipital lobe and this is the temporal lobe now let's come to the uh, talk about the occipital lobe the occipital lobe is at the back of the head, includes the cerebral cortex, um, in, includes the cortical area where most visual signals are sent and visual processing is began. And this area is called the primary visual cortex. Now let's come to the uh, parietal lobe. Parietal lobe uh, is forward of the occipital lobe and it includes the area that registers the sense of touch called the primary somatosensory cortex and various sections of this area receive signals from different regions of the brain. Uh, when ESB is delivered in these parietal lobes areas people report physical sensation as if someone actually touched them on the arm or cheek for example the parietal lobe is also involved in integrating visual input and in monitoring the body's position then there is a temporal lobe temporal means near the temples so temporal lobe uh, lies below the parietal lobe near its top the temporal lobe contains an area devoted to auditory processing and the primary auditory cortex. Um, so this was the overall overview of uh, the uh, temporal lobe. Now you can continuing forward we find the frontal lobe, the largest lobe in the human body and it contains the principal area that controls uh, the movement of uh, muscles the primary motor cortex esb applied in this area can cause actual muscle contractions and the amount of motor cortex allocated to the control of a body part depends not on the parts uh, size but on the diversity and precision of its movement so uh, more of the cortex is given to parts we have find uh, we have fine control over such as fingers, lips and tongue and less of the cortex is devoted to larger parts that make crude movements such as tie and shoulders. Now let's come to the topic, the two hemispheres. In this picture, I have found it very useful, so I have included it in this video too. You can see the two parts of the hemisphere. This is the left hemisphere and that one is the right hemisphere. So let's start with the cerebral hemisphere. So the definition include the nearly symmetrical left and right halves of the cerebral cortex is called cerebral hemisphere so um over a hundred years ago 
Broca and Wernick provide the first evidence that the right and left hemisphere were specialized for different functions. Uh, if you were to hold a human brain in your hand, the two cerebral hemispheres would appear to be symmetrical. And although the left and left, uh, left and right hemispheres are very similar in appearance, they are not identical. Anatomically, one hemisphere may be slightly lighter than uh, larger than the other. Uh, there are also subtle differences in the size of particular structures in the destruction of gray matter and white matter um, and in the patterns of folds and bulges and grooves that make up the surface of the cerebral cortex. Uh, what about the differences in the function of two hemispheres? In many cases, the function of the left and right hemisphere are symmetrical, meaning that the same functions are located in roughly the same places on each hemisphere. An example of such functional symmetry include the uh, primary motor cortex and the somatosensory uh, cortex, which uh, we will be discussing in our video. Uh, with regard uh, to other important process, however, the left and right cerebral hemisphere do differ. Each cerebral hemisphere is specialized for a particular abilities. So, Let's start about uh, um, the early work of uh, Broca and Wernix. So in this video, we will be discussing that um, by the end of 1700s, it had already been well established that injury to one side of the brain can produce muscle paralysis or loss of sensation on the opposite side of the brain, uh, of the body, sorry. Um, by the early 1800s, animal experiments had shown that specific functions would be lost if particular brain areas were destroyed. So, um, after the uh, discovery, of, um, the study on phrenology and the discovery of Phineas Gage, scientists were beginning to debate the notion of cortical uh, localization. So, cortical localization is basically the notion that different functions are located on localized in different areas of the brain, also referred to as localization of function. So, the idea that particular areas of the brain are associated with particular function. And then in 1860s, most conclusive evidence for cortical localization was gathered by a French surgeon and neuroanatomist Piri Paul Broca. So Piri Paul Broca was a uh, neuroanatomist and Broca treated a series of patients who had greatly great difficulty speaking but could comprehend writing a uh, written or spoken language uh, subsequently autopsy um, autopsy sorry autopsies of these patients revealed a consistent finding brain damage to an area on the lower frontal lobe so today, this area on the left hemisphere is referred to as Broca's area and it is known to play a crucial role in speech and production, in speech production. So um, about a decade after Broca's discovery, a young German neurologist named Karl Wernicke in 1840 to 1905 discovered another area in the left hemisphere that when damaged produce a different type of language disturbance and unlike the broadcast patients were unique patient patients had great difficulty understanding spoken or written communication and they could uh, speak quickly and easily but their speech sometimes made no sense and they sometimes used uh, meaningless words or even nonsense syllables though their sensations seem to be grammatical uh, in response to the question how are you feeling a patient might say something like don't glow glowers like it's kind of um, maybe it's grammatically correct but it can have uh, nonsense meanings like you don't get the point so uh, autopsies of these patients began revealed consistent damage to an area on the left 
um, temporal lobe that today is called Wernicke's area. So uh, the notion that one hemisphere exerts more control over is uh, more involved in the processing of a particular psychological function is termed lateral uh, lateralization of function. Now, lateralization of function is basically the notion that specific uh, psychological or cognitive functions are processed primarily on one side of the brain, also referred to as lateralization. So, um, speech and language functions are lateralized on the left hemisphere. And generally, the left hemisphere exert greater control over speech and language abilities in virtually all right-handed and in majority of the left-handed people. So, um, the language disruption demonstrated by uh, Broca's and Wernicke's uh, patients represent different types of uh, aphasia. And aphasia is the partial or um, complete inability to articulate ideas or understand spoken or written language and because of brain injury or damage. So, aphasia refers to the partial or complete inability to articulate ideas or understand spoken or written language because of brain injury or damage. So, there are many different types of aphasia. Uh, people with Broca's aphasia find it difficult uh, to impossible or, or you can say impossible to produce speech. But their uh, comprehension of verbal or written word is relatively unaffected. And people with Wernicke's aphasia can speak, but they often have trouble finding the correct words and have great difficulty comprehending uh, written or spoken communication. In more severe cases of Wernicke's aphasia, um, speech can be characterized by nonsensical, meaningless, incoherent words. So, so uh, although the two halves of the cerebrum are so physically similar that if asked to match the brain halves of the different people, it could be easily done. The two halves are functionally different. The left hemisphere is concerned with speaking, writing, and understanding, and damage in an area of the left hemisphere called the Broca's area results in speech impairment. And... Uh, destruction of the equivalent area in the right hemisphere uh, does not result in speech uh, impairment. So, superior skills in mathematics are associated with this hemisphere. So, uh, this was the end of the video. If your concept is clear, you can like the video. And if not, you can ask us in the comment section for any queries, for any question you can ask in the comment section and in order to stay notified for the upcoming videos you can like uh, you can subscribe to our channel uh, to get notified whenever the video is uploaded and you can also uh, click on the bell icon because we usually upload the request based videos from monday to friday or anytime when it is uploaded you will be notified so you can click on the bell icon you can also share the video with your friends and families because sharing is caring and until then allah hafiz